In this video tutorial, we're going to look at some of the kanji that you need to talk and to write about schools. And we're going to start over here with the first one. Now, on the left hand side, this information here is background information. This is like looking up a reference book and getting all sorts of information that's about the core meaning of the kanji. So we see here is the kanji and its core meaning is learning. But that doesn't mean if you wanted to write a sentence, I like learning, and you think that you could simply write that kanji and it would equal the English word learning. It just wouldn't work like that. You use this kanji with other kanji and in certain special ways that you actually have to learn. So we're going to be using this kanji with the root or base meaning of learning to join to a second kanji here, which we'll talk about in a moment, to make this combination word, which is pronounced gakko, gakko, and it means school. Now let's actually have a look at that character, check out its etymology, its origin, what it looked like in ancient China, and then we're going to learn the stroke order. And this is what the character for learning looked like originally. Now the oracle characters, they're the oldest, and they're up to almost 4,000 years old, and you can see it was really just a, like a bunch of buildings, wasn't it, houses. You can see here with the bronze characters, almost 3,000 years old, you can kind of see the house emerging, and then the child underneath, and above are the two hands, those there are two hands, and in between, that's the knowledge. So basically what you've got is those two hands there, forcing that knowledge down, into the child here who is learning. And the more modern form, this is up to about 2,000 years ago, looked something like this. Again, you can see the child quite clearly there, the two hands, the roof of the building, or a separator, and there's the knowledge being forced down. Now over here, what we have is a simplification, and this is actually the one that the Japanese uses. Normally Japanese use the traditional characters, but this one they have decided to go with the simplified form. And in fact, they were the first ones to do so. So the two hands and the knowledge has been abbreviated to one, two, three strokes, which is very much like the katakana tsu. Then you've got the divider, or we can think of it as the school roof, and then we've got the child underneath. Let's have a look at the stroke order. First we have the three strokes on top, which look very much like the katakana tsu. So we have ichi, ni, and sang coming down like that. And you can think of it as tsu hours of hard study or tsu books to read. In any case, that goes first and that's tsu. Then we're going to do the roof of the school. So down on the left, all the way across, and down on the right in one. And then we've got the child underneath. And here's the child's head. That's its little body. And there are the child's arms across like that. And that gives us the character for learning. And it's pronounced gaku. So we take the character there, which is pronounced gaku, and means learning. There it is here. And we add the second character. Now if we scroll down, we can see there it is here on the left. And its core meaning is school. Let's see what it looked like originally. Okay, this is what it looked like about 2,000 years ago. This character here is the one I want you to really focus on. And in each one, it's really quite similar, isn't it? And if you have a look at the one that they came up with last, there it is, and it's a tree. It's literally just a picture of a tree. If we go over here and have a look at the modern form of the character, you can see there that character looks slightly different, but still recognizable, and it's a tree. So I've got a tree on the left. Now on the right-hand side, this element here is used actually for its sound, but if we have a look over here at our kanji, I think we can come up with a good story for it. Okay, let's first of all start with the stroke order of the tree on the left. So it's going to go across, because that's our top stroke. Then we're going to go down, that's stroke number two, ni. Then we've got one branch, and the next. Notice this branch is a little short. That's because we're squishing this left-hand character or element into a composite character. And to do that, we just squish it up a little bit so that there's room for this on the right-hand side. Now this bit here is composed of, on the top, what looks identical to the number six. And if you recall, the stroke order is down, ichi, across for ni, san goes that way, and she is across like that. So we've got the number six there. And then here we've got what looks very much like cross legs. Ancient Japanese buildings were always made from wood, 
and so you can see the tree here on the left indicates it's a something made from wood and then you've got six children all with their legs crossed and there we have core meaning school or school building now we're just going to go up to the top again and have a look at these two kanji that make school so we've got the kanji for learning the kanji for a school building pop them together and we get gaku followed by ko but you'll notice that when you put them together it becomes gakko and that's simply because it's quite hard to actually say gaku ko gaku ko gaku ko very tricky so they abbreviate it to make it easier to say and it becomes gakko and the actual meaning now is school and you can use that in a sentence i go to school you can write gakko now we're going to focus on how to write primary school in Japan they call it small school so we're going to need this character over here which has a core or an original meaning of small now if you have a look there it is up there so you're adding small to school and you get small school it's pronounced shōgakko it means primary school and it's quite easy to remember the shō part because at primary school one of the very popular activities is show and tell so just remember to pronounce it show and tell instead of show and tell and you've got show from shogakko let's have a look at this character what it looked like and its stroke order now here are the ancient forms so these are the really really old ones up to 3000 years ago and basically it means to split off and make small so to split something off this is the 2000 year old version and over here, this is the modern version that we use these days. And to me, it looks like a person standing with their arms quite close in, looking very small. Let's have a look at the kakijun, or the stroke order. We start from the middle one. So we go down here in the middle. That little tick is completely optional. You don't need that. But it tells you that we're moving in this direction because our next stroke is going to go down on the left and then down on the right. And that is small. Think of that as a man. There's his head. There is legs and feet and his arms. They will put little hands on the end. And unlike big, where he holds his hands out like that and stretches himself very big, here he's making his arms quite small. So it means small. The last character on this page is the character which has a core meaning of middle. Now this time, instead of adding small to school, we're going to add the character for middle to school. And we get this, a middle school. Chu gakko. Chu gakko. Chu is quite easy to remember because at middle schools, or another word for a middle school, is a junior high school. And middle schools, they often like to chew, chewing gum. It's mostly against the rules, but that doesn't stop people. Chu Chugakko, middle school. Here's the character, and let's have a look at its origin. This character appears to come from weaving when a string heddle, which is this bit here, is absolutely necessary to be centered correctly. So there's the weaving, uh, the loom, and this string part comes down here, and it must be absolutely in the center. So if we just scroll down and have a look at the characters as they used to look, there we can kind of see that string always going down the middle there. So we've got that representing, I suppose, the loom and then the string going down the center. Here it is in its most recent historic form, so 2,000 years ago, the string going down the center, and this is what it looks like over here today. It's very easy to see that as meaning center, isn't it, or middle. Now this character has got our classic box shape in the middle. So we go down on the left, the stroke order never changes, across on the right, all in one, going round the corner and down, and then finish our box off, and finally a single stroke straight down the middle. And there we have our character for middle or center. Chew. And that finishes the characters that we need for the vocabulary on page 16.